All right, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone, and welcome to the channel once again. Um, today, I have a little bit of a different video for you guys prepared. This is my uh, clanmate, Hexogen, which uh, who I will be calling um, Hexo from now on, and he is playing the tier 10 steel ship Austin for us today. Um, this is like the first video in a series that I want to do, like um, I want to do more of these videos in the future where I just feature really good games from my clanmates. Uh, games that I think uh, you guys can learn something from, I can learn something from, and which are overall just very entertaining and good content to watch. So Hexo is playing in a three-man division together with a Kremlin and a Stalingrad. And the matchmaking is your current average with grand battle going on, which is in randoms you get 4 DDs and 3 battleships. That seems to be kind of the meta right now, because all of the battleships are obviously playing in grand battle for some reason. And what Hexo has decided to do, he is actually going to go kind of towards the middle. And the reason why he does this is actually fairly simple. He wants to catch a potential DD coming down the middle and getting into A through the middle. He will get spotted if the DD comes to the middle and then his Stalingrad behind him has a radar and will be able to actually instantly radar the DD after which Hexo can of course kill him. Now unfortunately he doesn't get spotted which means there's actually not a whole lot of chance that a DD can actually uh, is actually coming sorry. And so Hexo is going to sit behind this island and he's going to start looking for targets to farm with his reload booster. The reload booster, of course, being one of the main features of the Austin. The Austin is a Atlanta uh, hull with different, more, uh, let's say, more modern guns that fire only HE and SAP, so no AP. And the reload booster is special because you get an unlimited amount of reload boosters. So in comparison to your defensive AA, your heals and your hydro, you will never ever run out of reload boosters during a game. The reload is not actually what you would expect from an Atlanta class cruiser. The reload is actually quite long stock on the guns. It's about 8 seconds if you spec for it. And Hexos sees the booster on the other side, instantly opens up with the reload booster and fires away with the sap, and you can see the amount of shells it's pumping in the air in this short of an amount of time. Unfortunately, the Worcester does go dark, and he actually loses quite a bit of effectiveness there from his reload booster. I, I tend to have this as well in my games with the Austin. I have the ship myself, um, and what happens very often is you spot a ship that is like perfectly positioned to get farmed, you pop your reload booster, and then instantly afterwards he disappears. Now anyway, Hexo did get a bit unlucky with that, but still managed to get about 13,000 damage in on the Wooster. And now that he knows there's actually no DD down the middle, all of the DDs have been spotted on the enemy team. We see Gearing and Holland on the 1-2 line, Shimakaze and... Uh, which is the other one again? It is... I cannot see it right now. And the Holland, sorry, another Holland. And he is actually... they are actually on the 9-10 line. So... Hexo knows there's nothing stopping him from pushing in here, and he will push into A and get behind the islands, trying to farm whatever is behind these islands. And this is actually very good. He has waited until he knew where all the DDs were, and then now he's making his move. He spots a Chikichima, full broadside, and this is, I think, one of the only places in the game where I think he could have been doing do something different, and uh, you will see it in about 30 seconds. But he fires away with Sap at the Chiki, and the Sap on the Austin has a, I think, a 36 millimeter penetration. So on flat broadsides, uh, flat broadside Chikis and Yamatos, this is actually just glorious farming. This is just insane. He's doing like four or five K salvos. Sometimes there's a seven K salvo in there. And now his reload booster comes back up, 
And this is the only place where I would, would have done something different, actually. And here I would have actually popped a reload booster. Um, I'm not really sure why he's keeping it here. But this is the only place where I have personally would have done something different and just fired away with a reload booster, trying to get as much damage in on the cheeky. But he decides not to do it. I think he has a pretty good reason for it, uh, just that I cannot see it right now. The, enemy team has taken the, lead. the cheeky is of course turning out, maybe that's actually why he didn't do it. And he decides to switch to HE and shoot the cheeky. But unfortunately doesn't actually generate any fires. The fire chance actually on the Austin is very good. Uh, you wouldn't actually expect it. These are 127 millimeter guns, which normally means that you would end up at a fire chance around 5% base on DDs and other cruisers with this caliber. The Austin actually gets a 10% base fire chance, which you can imagine the amount of fires you can get just by pressing the reload booster and farming fires on battleships. This is Every reload booster you pop and you shoot HE in a battleship, it's a guaranteed double fire. At least in my uh, experience, it's absolutely insane the amount of fires you can form with the reload boosters. If you have battleships in front of you, like the Kurfurst over there, that actually shatters a lot of your sap even when they are fully broadside. Now, Hexo has been farming a little bit here and there. It's up to 61,000 damage at this point. Has captured the A cap. But his team is actually not doing all that good. Uh, they've just managed to get their first kill, but in return they have lost four ships already, including two of their DDs, which means the enemy now has a pretty big DD advantage. And if we look at the map, we see actually that his entire um, right flank, his entire right flank is leaving. The Hindenburg, Grozovoy and Smolensk, they're all retreating away from the decap not doing anything whatsoever to keep it contested and this is gonna turn into an issue in a couple of minutes just some uh, some foreshadowing there <laughs> um hexo is reversing trying to get shots in on the kurfurst trying to keep his um arcs as long as possible so he can actually lob the island and he's also waiting for the hindenburg to push him and to be able to get some torpedoes in he does get spotted which tells him immediately that there is a DD. And the only place where the DD could be coming from is, of course, from the D flank. Uh, we killed... Their his team has actually killed uh, one of the DDs on the 1-2 line. And the Holland is spotted, so he knows it's not the Holland with the Hindenburg coming for him. No, it's actually a DD coming from the other side. So he decides to move forward again. Has his Hydro still running. But, of course, he's spotted. Torpedo. And... There is a lot of HE coming for him from the D flank right now. I think that is actually the Smolensk and the Worcester, who uh, are kind of picking on him at this point, since they have nothing else to shoot at. Hexo decides to move back into A, shoot the Kurfurst. I think he will actually manage to pick up this kill. Almost. Almost. Oh, no, never mind, he doesn't pick up the kill. So his, uh, his Salem actually gets the kill, and he's still hydroed by, I think, the Hindenburg or Salem, and is now back into the A-cap, trying to find some cover, trying to get away from the Worcester and the Smolensk shooting at him. He goes undetected, and he figures right now it is time to make a turn, but gets radared, and will have to wait actually quite a long time before this radar runs out and he can get back. Which gives us the perfect opportunity to look at the minimap once again. Um, his team has managed to actually bring back the score. So in terms of ships at least. They are now only down one ship. But if you look at the minimap. We can see that his team is in a complete utter shit position. They have all been forced down to one. Pretty much they're all in two squares of the map. Except for Hexo and the Salem. And they're completely surrounded. The enemy team has three caps. They are in their spawn behind them. They are in the middle. They are uh, blocking their push towards the enemy spawn. And just this is not a very good position to be in for his team. Luckily for him, the Holland decides to help out. 
pops out right in front of him. And this is where the Austin action just shines. You pop the reload booster, you fire Sap. If he turns away, you switch to HE, which Hexo does perfectly here. And he just... You have no chance in DD. There's just, there's just no way. There is no chance you have in a DD in this kind of a situation. I have no clue what the Holland was actually aiming to achieve. He, he knew perfectly well that this Austin was there. But he was like, mm, no, we need to we need to actually go torp this uh we need to actually go torp this Kremlin, which has enormous amounts of torpedo protection. Uh, and I will do maybe 30k if I hit all of my torps. And yeah. But in the end throws away his ship. Now of course getting that Holland kill didn't actually um do all that much for Hexo's team here, because they instantly lost. They instantly lost their uh, Grozovoy to a detonation. And then in return, of course, Kremlin kills the full broadside Worcester. Which was kind of threatening Hexo. And now it is actually time, like, Hexo needs to start doing something if they want to win the game. They're down three caps. He's up to about 93,000 damage at this point. And there's a Smolensk in smoke right in front of him. So he's going to use the torpedoes of the Austin, which are actually really good. Pretty much, these are um, Fletcher torpedoes, which means they have a 10.5 kilometer range and actually also have um, the same damage as the Fletcher torpedoes. Same damage, same speed. Pretty much, it's a copy paste from the gearing uh, from the Fletcher, sorry. And Hexo is going to fire off his spreads into the Smolensk smoke. The Smolensk does get spotted because Hexo is now too close. Kremlin takes a shot. Actually gets a Citadel, which kind of surprises me, because the Smolensk is pretty much full broadside. At this point, Hexo knows he only needs two shots to kill this Smolensk. His torpedoes were also going to hit. And there we go. He does manage to kill the Smolensk. He's already turning in to dodge potential torpedoes coming towards him. And this does bring his team another kill. Now, if we look at the scores once again, um, it is not looking exactly too great for him. Um, they are in a 4 versus 5 situation, the enemy team still has 2 DDs, they have a pretty much full HP Yamato, and his teammates are stuck inside the A-cap. And his Shimakaze goes down. So, right now, it is actually a 3 versus 5, and they are down 2 caps. Hexo does manage to get into the B-cap. And spots the Hindenburg, pops his reload booster, and is going to try to get as much damage as possible into this Hindenburg. Which will actually prove to be quite valuable later on in the game. The damage he gets right now. Yamato of the enemy team, who is full HP. I feel like he makes a pretty big mistake here. Because what he's actually going to do, instead of pushing around the corner and going for Hexo and defending his B-cap, he's actually going to turn in. And he's going to go for the channel instead. Um, we will see in a couple of seconds how that turns out for him. Hindenburg still spotted. Hexo did about 15k to him. He's just sitting there and reversing. His Kremlin is stuck in the A-cap. His Hindenburg is stuck in the A-cap. They are literally of no use right now. Other than blocking that cap from, from the enemy team. Hexo does secure the B-cap. And is now going to go for that Yamato, who has been spotted going into the channel. He knows he needs to do something. 3 versus 5. Um, this is the time where he has to actually uh, carry his team. He needs to do something. He needs to, he needs to kill this Yamato without getting killed himself. Yamato is going for the channel. And what Hexo is planning on doing here is actually really smart. He's actually going to go full broadside. So... The Atlanta hull is so... It is so... Um, it doesn't have any width, basically. I forget the English word here. So, he can actually go full broadside. Of course, the Yamato shoots right before he comes around the corner, which makes him makes it a possibility for him to turn in, make sure to get all of the torps off, gets all of the torpedoes in, pops his hulls, actually, and then just... Well, right, at this range, Yamato, I've told you guys already what you can do in a cheeky. You saw that 12k sap salvo. Um, yeah, Yamato has no chance whatsoever right here. There we go, another 12k salvo, and the Yamato does go down. Bringing Hexo up to 219,000 damage. This, however, does not 
um, alleviate the problems for his team. They are still down a ship. They are down about 250 points. And Hexo will now be securing the decap for his team while actually the Kremlin and the Hindenburg are pushing out of A. Instantly afterwards, the enemy team actually goes into the A gap and we know the Holland is not in A right now. So we we must assume that the Shivakaze is actually in A, which is, I think, also one of the big mistakes for the enemy team in this game. Shimakaze could easily have just gotten gone back, capped B, and I think that might have actually won them the game in the end. But um, I will actually speed this up. So Hexo will be securing B. He's trying to kill the Shima, doesn't work. Kremlin actually kills the Shima off. He gets the decap and is now going to move back to the middle of the map. Salem and Holland have both pushed into A now. While Kremlin and Hindenburg are pushing around the corner. His team, Hexo's team, is still down 200 points. It is a 3 versus 3 at this point. And they just need the kills. Both Hindenburg and Kremlin don't have a lot of HP left. Uh, so does Hexo, by the way. Hexo has about 22k left. They spot the Salem. I think it's actually the, Krem the Hindenburg Hydro that spots him. Yeah, probably the Hindenburg Hydro. And Hexo doesn't hesitate a single second. Opens up on the Salem with Sap. And this Salem is just in huge problems right now. Um, this is this is just pretty much making the same mistake as Hexo's team made earlier. Hexo switches to the Sap, opens up with a reload booster, already knows that the Salem is going to be dead from those two salvos, instantly switches to the Holland, uses the rest of his reload booster on the Holland, and actually manages to pick up a very juicy Kraken and double strike right here. Bring him up to 240,000 damage with 5 kills and 3 full base caps. The Hindenburg is now the only ship left on the enemy team. And all the Hindenburg can do at this point is just run for his life. He still has the points lead. There's a minute and 45 seconds left on the clock. All Hindenburg has to do is survive. And we see, of course, Hexo, the Kremlin... They're all rushing now to kill this Hindenburg. They need to get this skill in order to secure the win. There's no time to get into additional caps, except for perhaps the A-cap. But even getting the A-cap wouldn't actually win them the game at this point, since the points gain is too little to make up the difference. Exo is trying. He's trying to get that sap to use. Firing at the Hindenburg from almost extreme range. His teammate in the division is telling the uh, friendly Hindenburg to actually watch out for torpedoes that the Hindenburg from the enemy might have dropped and he's also going to tell him to use all of the guns. That's the that's the situation they're in right now. They need to get this kill. They need to get this kill. Hexo is trying but his range is not enough. And in the end, the Kremlin does manage to secure the kill. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, so this was... Hexogen playing the tier 10 light cruiser Austin. I hope you guys enjoyed this content. Unfortunately, I didn't get any um, team score and screenshots from him. So this is all we have. But I do expect this game to lie somewhere between 2800 and 3000 base XP. Thank you guys all very much for watching. Leave a su subscription below if you enjoy this kind of content. Have a great week everyone and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye and thank you very much for watching.